that it means so much for me to see African dance on such a platform. Hello beautiful people, welcome back. It's always a pleasure to have you join us here at the New Times Rwanda. My name is Davis Hijiro. Today's guest is an African dance choreographer. She has won multiple awards like MTV VMA Awards for Best Choreography 2018, Screen Nation for Best Performance in Film. She is IFAD advocate. She aspires to be a pioneer to make the African dance recognized worldwide like street dance, like ballet. So help me in welcoming the lady herself, Sherry Silva. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Hi, Sherry. Hi, Davis. How are you? Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Thank you for making time to be here. How is Rwanda treating you? Rwanda is treating me very well, mm -hmm. very beautiful every mm -hmm. time I come here. Yeah. Yeah. I would like us to start by this. Like people have got to know you when you performed a childish Gambino song and uh, you also have your own statue in England, right? Yeah. So like before that, tell us who is Sherry Silva? Like a little bit of background for people to know who Sherry Silva is. Yeah, Sherry Silva is a lover of God. Um, I love children and a lot of my work involves just trying to give children like me from Africa a better opportunity to um, express their talents and travel the world hopefully. Um, also I love food <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I love my country, that's mm -hmm. Sherry Silva. Yeah. How did you get to start the dancing career? Um, I began by putting videos on YouTube mm -hmm. and um, you know people started to see the videos and then I had to take myself seriously and really, really make sure I'm putting out excellent things. There was something you talked about, about working with children. Yeah. You like helping and it's so good of you, like it's something to commend, you know. But uh, I heard somewhere you saying, when I started, when you started, you and your mom, you didn't have any money. Like where did you get the first money to start your charity works? <laughs> That's funny. Um, so yeah, when we moved to the UK, um, we didn't have a lot of money. My mum worked a few jobs and she was also studying. Um, so eventually, when it came to me personally doing charity work, the first thing I did was to raise money for mosquito nets after losing my cousin, Gayemba, to uh, malaria. Yeah, I wanted to end world malaria. Thank you. So what I did was I baked cakes and um, I sold them around the neighbourhood in London and people bought them and I was able to buy like 20 mosquito nets which at the time it wasn't a lot but now it's quite a lot when you think about I was about nine years old yeah you had to like sacrifice something for you to start to help people yeah we've seen you host mega shows to buy health insurances you did it in Rwanda you help you've helped people in Nigeria at Ajeguno is is, is Ajegunle. it Ajegunle. Yeah. <laughs> wow you've done your research yeah i have wow. but uh, look who's prepared <laughs> tell us what's the feeling of helping like what experience what feeling do you get do you get from helping people who don't even know you actually yeah. um, helping people that can't help you gives you a fulfillment in your heart it makes you realize there's more to life. Um, it's not enough for me to just get all the awards in the world and buy all the houses and all the cars if I haven't helped my community where I'm from and just Africans in general. So I think it would be very selfish for me to get everyone to celebrate African culture when Africans are not benefiting. So if African dance and African culture is going up, then Africans also have to rise because they are the ones who originate the culture. We've seen you represent Africa. It's also commendable, but does the helping motivation, does it have anything to do with your childhood? Was it something like maybe you might have passed through it and then it shaped you, like yeah. you grew up trying and fighting the same life you lived in in your childhood? 
Yeah, so I mean, again, with my cousin Gayemba dying from malaria, mm. and that was very personal for me. So, because we both grew up together. So I, I don't want another child to have to suffer that. That's why, you know, we pay health insurance and provide mosquito nets. And then also, you know, going to the well when I was a child. And I think my grandma's house only had water maybe 20, 2011 or something like that. Here in Rwanda? Yeah, so before that, every time I go to see her, I'd have to go to the well to get the water. So I know the value of the water. So it's taught me to value things, even in my house in London. When I'm running the water, I close it, I turn off the lights, like I'm... You don't want to waste anything. I don't like to waste. It doesn't matter how much money you have. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, we shouldn't be wasteful. Yeah, back to your dancing career. And uh, please tell us, the whole journey, was it something like, was it a smooth ride? Or did you have to meet, did you meet some challenges here and there? Oh, I met loads of challenges. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, still meeting challenges, but at the very beginning it was tough because I was young. I'm, I'm still young. Yeah. I'm like, How I'm going to be, you? I'm going to be 28. Um, okay. But I was even younger and in this industry is full of men. So I had to make my voice deeper so they could take me more seriously. I, I, I love to smile. I had to reduce my smiling so I could be taken seriously. Um, I had to wear high-heeled shoes because I'm short, well, I was short. Um, so yeah, just being a woman, a black woman in the industry was very tough. Um, but I've been able to kind of create my own brand now. So people come to me because they really want to work with me. Mm. Cherry Silver is now a brand and it's something to celebrate. We, we go to see your statue in England like how did it come about to have your own statue in England yeah so in the UK uh, only four percent of the statues are of women mm. there's more statues of animals than women in the UK so um, I teamed up with Adidas and they selected a few women who are doing inspirational things and they decided to team up with the local council and create statues of us mm -hmm. Yeah, so the statues, are, they, they move to like different locations so people can see them. Yeah, yeah, I think on the statue I've seen, they, did they mention Eifat? Yeah, yeah, they mentioned. So to tell us about Eifat, how do you work with Eifat, like what's it all about? Yeah, so I'm United Nations Eifat Advocate for mm -hmm. Rural Youth. That's the International Fund for Agricultural Development. So I represent all rural youth around the world and um, I visit with UN these youths. I see what they need to not just farm but actually become agripreneurs, which is an entrepreneur yeah. who farms. Um, I make farming look cool. In fact, they make farming look cool. I just show it to the world. And um, we hopefully get governments to donate more towards these young people in these rural areas. Because a lot of people leave the village because they feel there's no opportunity. But my job, I let them know that in farming there is opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I've seen some amazing stories, um, like a boy called Gabriel in Cameroon we visited. Um, actually, my dance partners came to Cameroon with me oh, yeah. and we met him and he was able to buy a house for himself and his parents just by chicken farming. That's great. But if I've, I've seen you dance in farms, I've seen you dance, <laughs> and it really makes the work look cool, you yeah. know? It doesn't look, it doesn't okay. still have the other image we've always had for agriculture and... Uh, Our grandparents. Yeah. No, no. Young people are farming now. Young people yeah. are farming. Yeah. We should all try it. We should all have it as an option in yeah. the things we plan. Yeah, I, I work with um, AGRF. Uh, go-getters which is basically a prize we give to young people who come up with really really good farming ideas so I think each person gets like twenty thousand dollars twenty thousand dollars towards their farming idea and so many young people have come up with amazing um, new ideas. I innovative ideas of how mm. to farm even how to farm in the city so trust me farming is the way forward I believe, I agree. Yeah, I have a farm actually. You do? But I don't know how, what's <laughs> happening there. Here in Rwanda. In Rwanda and Bujisera. In Bujisera. <laughs> Talking about the farm you have in Rwanda, how, how did this go with the sewing machine uh, that you 
you, you you initiated once you were helping the six workers, you were oh, getting them off the street. Oh, you research! Yeah, no, the <laughs> sewing you. machine project's been really good. Mm -hmm. um, we work with a lot of sex workers. Um, our charity in Rwanda is called Destiny Rebuilders. It's registered here. And um, the children are called Children of Destiny. So some of those children had, they were underprivileged, and some of them, their mothers were sex workers. So what we wanted to do is, help the children and help the parents. So a good way to help the parents is by giving them a skill. So some of those women now, they, most of them have stopped sex working. That's so great. their children are with them and you know, they're living they're normal lives. They're now taking lives. care of their children. Yeah, yeah. That's really great. Yeah. And someday I'll visit this big sewing machine project. Yeah. You know. uh, do you have some future projects you're working on currently you would like to share? Sure, I just worked with The Minions, which is a new movie coming out. It's a kid's film. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, okay, I know The Minions. Um, so I just did some choreography for that. Okay. Um, I just finished Sing 2, which was uh, another animation movie for kids. Mm -hmm. I love kids' projects. Um, you just... work with, obviously, you work <laughs> with kids, you dance with kids. It's something. Yeah. Visible, yeah. Yeah, so just finished that. Um, obviously, I'm working with Adidas. Yeah. And um, I don't know if I'm allowed to mention, but I'm working with an amazing drink company. Okay. Um, so we just signed a contract with them. Um, I'll give you a clue. One of the, the top, the best. I think that's where you're branding so. out of Randa. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And um, I mean, my dream anyway in Rwanda is to open a talent development center. Mm -hmm where people can come and learn how to dance, to act, to sing, to play basketball and really develop their talents and you know push these young people from Rwanda to the world the same way Nigeria has all these amazing talents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you working on it? Is it studying in the future? You know what it is? I need to, <laughs> um, I need to have the support of the country mm -hmm. Um, so I will start talking about it more. I've just been really busy, but now I'm ready to start talking about it and working towards it. I look forward to that. I think that will be an amazing project among others. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Talking about the country, you've been in Rwanda, you like Rwanda, you represent Rwanda and it's something good. What do you like about Rwanda so far? What oh do my you gosh. like about Rwanda? I love how clean Rwanda is. I love the road, it's beautiful, the palm trees are organized. The police officers are so friendly. They look scary, but they're actually very nice. <laughs> I love our president. He's so supportive towards the youth. He's always been supportive towards me. Um, just You've ever met him? Yeah. What was the performance of you performing for the president back then? My first ever performance for yeah. the president was in like, I think I was like 13. And um, I wrote a song um, <laughs> for him. Singer. I know, I couldn't even sing at the time, but it was, he had come to London. Mm -hmm. It was something like, come celebrate with me, for the president is here. His Excellence Kagame, who redeemed Rwanda. Wow. Who redeemed Rwanda. So I performed that for him. And um, I think it was Ambassador Gatete at the time said that he was so happy. Yeah. So then um, after that, the Rwandan embassy in London recommended me for this movie called Africa United. Mm -hmm. So just off performing for the president that time, it just opened many doors for me. Up to now, wow. he's still been very supportive towards me and the youths in this country. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's great to hear. Did it go to the studio? I love you. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> Did, it go, did you go in the studio to produce that? Song? Yeah, like I went to the studio and everything. I was like 13. Like yeah. the, the music is, is also like... It's not can... out. Like it was just Why? for him. Why? And for the people that... Because <laughs> I'm not a singer. But yeah, it was really good. I need to find that song. Please. I heard they played it on the radio. Do you know, know we can like it because we all love the president. Don't yeah, we need just... to find that song Please. actually. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look for it. It was good. There was another one as well. It was like... Because I used to perform at Rwandese mm -hmm. uh, events in the UK before dancing. Mm -hmm. There was one that's like, Rwanda is going higher and higher. Rwanda, my motherland, I love you, I bless you. <laughs> oh, that's really good. <laughs> I don't know what part I'll pray in that song because I can't sing and I can't dance. But anyways, we'll, we'll figure it out. A lot of people don't know this about me, but yeah. There you go. You, you can, Exclusive you can information. Sing. 
I don't. I didn't say I can sing. Uh -huh. I said I sang songs. Can you speak in your own dialect? Oh my god! A little bit of it. Like, no. how, which which word can you? Do you know speak what it is? My kids well? they laugh at me whenever I try, <laughs> and they correct me. So I can hear you. But, but just try. I like, don't want to embarrass myself just, here. Just you know, one, I can understand word. you when you talk to me. It's just if I want me, you want me to talk back. That's where the problem is. But yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Just just one word. The word you can hardly speak and the one you can easily speak. <laughs> <laughs> like you've been trying this word. I'm a cool tried. basic stuff. Like yeah, that, that's that's the one you can easily I'm a pronounce. Cool. Okay. That's the one Me you can. Uh -huh. The else? one you've always tried to pronounce and you can't. The hard word. I used to find number seven very hard to say, <laughs> but now I'm, I'm I'm better. You know you know say. We are coming to an end of a conversation. What is the proudest moment you, you, you've accomplished? Like your proudest yeah. accomplishment? Oh my gosh. Well, okay. Can I give you like four? All right. Number one, winning the VMA, the MTV VMA Awards. Just being there on stage, black African. I think 2018 was one of yeah, the best. Yeah, that was a sweet, sweet yeah. year. Um, just being on stage with my black skin, representing Africa. Collecting yeah. that award was amazing. Another one, um, uh, what would I say? Gosh, um, being able to get some of the kids in the foundation mm -hmm. who dance to travel outside of, uh, and some of the dancers to travel outside of Rwanda to perform for Bill Gates in America. That was really a proud moment. Mm -hmm. Another one is being able to speak in front of the Pope and just shake hands wow. with him. Wow. Yeah, that was also really cool. And being able to name a gorilla at Kwiti Zina, mm -hmm. 2019, I think it was, yeah. That was another proud moment, yeah. Yeah, actually we've come to an end of our conversation, Sheriff Thank you very much for making this time. It's something to really thank you for. Thank you. And thank you too for tuning in to the New Times Rwanda YouTube channel. And for more videos like this, subscribe to our channel and please Make sure you follow us on our social media platforms. Our Twitter handle is at New Times Rwanda and Instagram is at the New Times Rwanda. My name is David C. Europe. Till next time, take care.